and welcome to the hobby shop. Today I'll be hosting Don, and I'm here with Philip. Sadly, and, and we're down two men. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's tend to happen, you know. You gotta do what you gotta do. Some people sleep in. Some people just don't have a ride. You know, that's life. Shit happens, and you just gotta do. And there's then there's people who don't, won't set an alarm clock. Yeah, not too. Or you know, at least you stay up late. Yeah. But uh, today's topic is going to be comedy. That's right, people. It's going to be all about it. There's not going to be a certain kind. Just whatever comes to mind. So scary movie. Yeah. Not talking about that shit. Yeah. yeah. Don't need to give that any credibility and something that needs to be buried. Buried and forgotten. It needs to die in fire. Yeah. So, all right now, uh, let's, let's start off with, I wouldn't really say what we first coming into the comedy, but I want to say, like, what is, what is something that we've really come to enjoy? What was our first comedy we truly kept going back to, you know, what made us love this kind of humor? Uh, mine would be Ghostbusters. I come back to Ghostbusters, like, shit, like four times a year. Uh, to me, it's the one of the funniest movies I've ever watched, and it's endlessly quotable. Uh, just I can't really describe what it is. It's just something about those three guys: uh, Dean Aykroyd, Howard Ramis, and Bill Murray. And I, thinking back, preparing for this episode, um, I realized that a lot of my favorite comedies has either Dan Aykroyd in it. Bill Murray, or Howard Ramis direct directing or writing, or or starring in. So, w would you say that is it the character humor in? Is it the actor humor, or you know I the think writers? It's a combination. I keep uh, on the, these three guys are um, they wrote most of the movie, mm -hmm. so a lot of it was uh, just them playing off each other. So a lot of those char the characters, uh, Ray. Peter and Bakeman, I think that's his name. Hmm? No, Egon. Egon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ray, Peter, and Egon, they, those characters worked together so much because those guys had real chemistry between them. And I, you know, I even like the, I can't ever remember the guy's name, but uh, Winston. He, uh, he was a great straight man to kind of bounce off these kind of nut jobs. Uh, and you know it, each one kind of had their own character like well Egon he was the genius but he like did it he didn't know how to like explain it to people who are, are not as smart as he is so while, mo most people have no idea what he's saying um, then you have um, then you have uh, Dean Aykroyd's character he's just so enthusiastic like, he's also like Egon, where he'll spat off all this uh, techno jargon. And it's just, he has like this childlike enthusiasm. And it's just really funny to watch that play off of uh, Bill Murray's character. Because he's very, very dry, very cynical. Um, and I really didn't understand what, what made him funny when I was a kid. Later on, I realized that he's like the ultimate dick. Hmm. He is like the ultimate asshole. Well, well, the thing is, people usually tend to really love the asshole character. Yeah, and that's he does that perfectly. He's great at being that narcissistic um, egomaniac. And I always find it so strange, you know, people find an attraction to these characters, but if they ever met him in real life... They would or, be a douchebag. Yeah, wouldn't, you wouldn't like him, but you're loving him in the movie. Like, oh, this is such an awesome character. It's like, if you were hanging out with this character, do you really think it would be that? Yeah. But, um, I guess it's one asshole to another asshole. Yeah. So, maybe that's why I like uh, <laughs> Bill Murray so much. Um, but... The writing was so well done in this. It, it's all it's basically all character comedy. Um, there is a you know those just funny lines in there, but um, a lot of them are a lot of the funniest lines come from the char uh, which characters are saying those. Not because they're just funny lines, it's because of the character. 
like the the whole joke about in the beginning, you know, the the three guys they're they're about to uh, try to catch the the ghost in the library, and you know Ray's like get her. And then at the end of the movie, I guess as payback, uh, Bill Murray's character tells Dean Aykroyd's character he's like go get her Ray. <laughs> it's just. Um, it's just, I think those two were like the probably my favorite part of the movie was just those two playing off each other. Uh, of course you have, of course you have uh, Rick Romanis. Um, Rick Romanis is fun, almost funny, in, yeah, he's funny in pretty much anything he's in, from Spaceballs to Honey I Shrunk the Kids to um, Little Shop of Horrors. He, I haven't really seen a movie where he wasn't funny. Um, I think his best character he ever played was probably, I can't remember the name of the character, but his character from Spaceballs, I think, was probably the funniest character he ever um, played. Think, um, it was basically, he was the shrimpy Darth Vader. Yeah, I'm sorry, what did, he had, did he have a name? He, he had a name, I just can't recall the name. Um, huh. Uh, it's been it's been a good while since I've seen it, so yeah, I I, I would know the name. Uh, what was funny about that was just the idea that this guy, this shrimpy little guy, has the same amount of power and fear as Darth Vader does. Yeah. It's just hilarious. Uh, the the thing that I love those incompetent villains that that somehow have power. I love those kind of characters like. My favorite episodes of South Park are, are the ones where Cartman gets all the power. It just I think those are some of the ho- most hilarious characters. It's just these these horrible like these horrible people who are completely incompetent who can't handle any situation. Basically, I, I love like characters that are like uh, children in adult bodies. So basically, just main children if they had power. Yeah, like like the uh, the queen from Alice in Wonderland, the the uh, Disney version. Okay. Um, I just love those kind of characters. I think they're hilarious. Um, but get staring back to Ghostbusters. Honestly, I can't pin down one thing that makes the movie so funny. It's just some combination of the actors, the writing, the directors, uh, the direction, um, and just. A lot of subtle humor in there. Like if you really like, if you really watch it and try to catch every joke, there's ones you would you would miss like the first ten times you saw the movie. There's still stuff. I'm sure that if I watch the movie again, I'm going to notice more more jokes and more uh, little uh, those those uh, little nuggets that you might find if you look hard enough. Um, that's that's about it. Alright, alright. Um, for me, I, I mean, I'm not a movie goer, so, you know, I don't have really stuff to go to for movies. So, like, the first thing that I know, like, I keep continuously going back to uh, stand up comedian uh, George Carlin. And I mean, I just, I always continue, I don't know what keeps bringing me back, but it's either the fact that it's, you're gonna agree, I mean, to an extent. I mean, he's, he's, he, you know, there's parts where he's, like, pretty extreme, and you're like, okay. Yeah, dial it back a little bit. I don't agree with that, but I like what you said at first. You were making a good <laughs> argument there. Uh, yeah, I, I'm i very limited on George Carlin, because I just started to really watch his stuff. Um, but the stuff I always watch is, like, his stuff from, like, the 70s and early 80s, uh, where it was more about just the weird corpse of the world before he got really that delving into religion and politics. Yeah, all and stuff the political like that. stuff where it With, was just crazy stuff. But I think he's one of the funniest political com- he was one of the funniest political comedians. Yeah, and I mean political humor is not fucking easy. And no, you know, it, he makes it odd, like for everyone. There's um the three who I think are the best well, obviously George Carlin. Yeah. <laughs> Two others would be Louis Black and Stephen Colbert. Oh yeah, definitely. Like you know, I think it's just like Stephen Colbert also because uh, they both make it 
enjoyable. Yeah. You don't really have to completely. Uh, I guess I would have to throw in uh, jo- uh, John Stewart. John Stewart. I would have yeah. to throw him in there too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they they make political humor in a point to where you, it's blunt, but it's blunt enough to where if you're not into it, you understand what they're talking about, and you're gonna laugh. You know, I'm not really big into politics and stuff like that, and I still find myself laughing about what they usually tend to say. Um, I did kind of. There's certain things that happens in our country that I'm really interested to see what Stephen Colbert does with it because. If you really pay attention to a lot of politics, there is some stuff that is just prime for comedy, like that whole the whole government shutdown. Yeah, uh, the just, big the big Republicans being big giant kids going wah, we didn't get our way. It was basically a but yeah, they were basically a bunch of children fighting over a ball. Yeah. Um, but Stephen Colbert, I think he, I I watched this show weekly while that was happening just because it was some of the funniest things I saw him do. And I've, I've been a long-term fan. I recently got into Stephen Colbert about two years ago. Uh, so I miss out on a lot of this great stuff. One of my favorite old clips is actually what he did, did around Christmas time. One of my favorite clips of Stephen from the Colbert Report is when he, when he invites the Krumpus on the show. The Krumpus is this like holiday demon or something mm-hmm. it's like he's it's German uh, the myth apparently was uh, you know set you know Saint Nicholas would go door to door and giving gifts to all the good children but all the bad children would get a visit from the Krampus would basically beat them with a stick and throw them in a bag and carry them to hell I think, uh, I think my favorite skit was I think I think it was about probably a year ago what he did on uh, was it Martin Luther King Day or was it Black Independence Day? It, it, it's when he did that really racist cartoon yeah. and he was really debating like, I shouldn't do this, but I am going to do it and you know he's going to do it and it's just well, <laughs> the, the timing thing, of that though. The, the, what makes it funny though is it's clearly offensive, it's but he doesn't so, care. Yeah, like, it's, it's one of those things that's so offensive. You're laughing at it. Knowing that it's not that offensive, like yeah, it's, it's a joke. It's a joke, but it's it fits the character. It fits the character of Stephen Colbert because yeah. he's, you know, he's supposed to be this like egomaniacal, um, this this right right winged lunatic. Yeah. I, I don't know. I can't really put it in anything other words. Uh, I think that pretty much sums it up. I mean. He plays that that like crazy Republican so well. Although I don't know, is he actually a Republican? Uh, uh, no. I want to say no. He, I don't know. I don't know. It, his, it uh, doesn't matter. Where he politically stands. It doesn't matter. But uh, he, I don't know when. It's like he always knows what to say when something happens. Um. If something silly in the world happens, he knows perfectly how to make fun of it. If something horrible happens in the world, he knows how to make fun of it. Yeah, and, and speaking of stuff like that, you know, there's a lot of people who always question is, should we really laugh at stuff like that? It, it depends on the joke, honestly. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, it, it depends on the audience who you're targeting, and I guess it, it really depends on timing and how you say it. Yeah, um, y- there's one way, you can do it where you just, you know, you just say fuck it and try to go as offensive as, offensive as possible, and that will get a laugh out of some people, but you can also really deter other people. Yeah, y- it's, it's drawing the line of knowing where to stop. Yeah, and that's one of those things where I think that's what made George Carlin so so great is he really knew how to blur that line and, and widen the line. Yeah. Um, he just knew how to he just knew how to put things to to make it to where it's like you might not agree, but it's still funny. Yeah, it's funny, and I mean, I'm 
I get a little sensitive to some of the topics and stuff, but I still laugh. I'm not gonna be like the people on YouTube, but oh my fucking god, fuck this fucking hippie in the fucking ass with giant ass oh. spike dildo. No. Oh my god. No, I wonder how many emails he had to get like that. Oh god, there was like, I remember seeing a fucking YouTube video, I was like, really? A fucking church person did a, was celebrating for the fact that he passed away. He's like, he's burning in hell. And I was like, oh my god, really? Are you that fucking obsessed over a comedian? Well, then there's a lot. Then, I think there's two extremes. There's the people who are way too easily offended, and then there's the people who um, kind of let, let stuff um, go. Or not go, but let stuff fly just because they like the comedian. Um, when I think of like an offensive comedian that's not funny, I think of Cat Williams. I think of uh, God, that guy from the UFC. Uh, he did Fear Factor. He was host of Fear Factor. I, I know who you're talking about. I'm running blank. Uh, uh, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Joe yeah. Rogan. There we go. It, they're two extremes uh, because they both told equally an offensive joke that it was like, wow. There's like, there's a joke, but they sound way too angry. Or it to be a joke. Right, like, they make it sound like they mean it. Like, I guess, uh, like my sister says about Carlos Mencia, you know, he says, she says, like, you understand he's joking, but it sounds like he's serious. Yeah. Like, he believes in what he says. Now, with Joe Rogan, his whole thing was, um, he basically said, if you believe in God, you might as well kill yourself. And now, uh, Cat Williams basically said the same thing about, you know, about, um, about atheists, or not atheists, it, people who believe, believe in, in evolution. evolution. And it's just like, okay, there's a joke, and then there's this, you getting on getting on your soapbox. Yeah, it's where you sound like a pretentious jerk. But then again, this, you know, let's go back to George Carlin again. You know, there's a lot of people who say he's a pretentious jerk, and I'm like, no, it sounds like, he makes it, I guess, a, kind of, it's like a weird, weird line, and it's hard to explain. But he makes it sound like it's just, it's a joke. Like, you can't take him seriously. Like, if you were talking to him face to face, you know, he would joke about it. And, you know, he says he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't care. And he's... Oh, it is time. Okay. Uh, just, uh, we'll be right back.